the Los Angeles Dodgers have a chance to clinch a spot in the World Series for the first time in 29 years. See It Live starts now. Game 5 of the NLCS is underway at Wrigley Field in Chicago. If the Dodgers win tonight, they'll win the pennant. Good evening, I'm Hannah Wing. And I'm Brian Redhead. The Cubs must win each of the, their next three games in order to make it to the World Series. Let's take a look at the score. The Dodgers have taken an early 3-0 lead after a pair of doubles by Cody Bellinger and Chris Taylor and a home run by Kiki Hernandez. Clayton Kershaw and the Dodgers have a chance to redeem themselves from last season's early playoff exit when the team lost to the Cubs at Wrigley Field and gave up their bid for the 2016 World Series. Kershaw has had an impressive season so far with a 2.31 ERA and an 18-4 record. But the three-time Cy Young Award winner has struggled late in the postseason games with a career postseason ERA of 5.68. Cubs starting pitcher Jose Quintana struggled somewhat this year with an ERA over four, but has had strong showings this postseason game against both the Dodgers and the Nationals. See it live reporter Savannah Sinfield is live at the 901 Bar and Grill to watch the game with fans. Let's see what the atmosphere is like over there right now. Savannah? Thanks, Brian and Hannah. Right now we're here at the 901 Bar and Grill where baseball fans are here to watch the Dodgers play the Cubs in the fifth game of the National League Championship Series. This is a huge game for the Dodgers. Right now they're up by three runs. And if they win this game, they'll be joining whoever wins the Yankees versus Astros game that's happening tomorrow in the American League. The last time the Dodgers won a World Series was in 1988 against the Oakland Athletics. It's a really big game, a lot of excitement here, mostly Dodger fans given that we are in LA, so we'll keep you guys posted. Thanks, Brian and Hannah. We are still here at the 901 Bar and Grill. It's getting more and more packed. When we first got here, when the game started, we thought it wouldn't have that much of a turnout, but I think that the excitement just got more and more as the Dodgers keep making runs. We had a home run a few seconds ago. It's a really, really exciting time. And you know what? It's actually just even more exciting considering that the Cubs won the World Series last year. It's a really, really competitive atmosphere. We have a couple Cubs fans here who aren't too happy right now seeing as that the Dodgers are winning by a lot. And it's just a lot of LA Dodger blue pride going on in the 9 -0. So right now we're going to talk to Chris, who is our Dodger fan here at the 9-0. How are you? He's really excited about this game. So Chris, <laughs> tell me, yes, how long have you been a Dodger fan? Man, 10 years. 10 years. And are you from LA? Uh, yes, born and raised. Yes, yes, yes. Why are you such a Dodger fan? Uh, for the simple fact that um, it's from the community and um, I'm not, first of all, I'm a soccer fan, but I, they grew on to me and everything like that, so I, I love Dodgers. That's amazing. And how much would you be willing to pay for a World Series ticket if they make it? If they make it, it would be so awesome if it was against the Yankees because it's so awesome. A thousand dollars. A thousand dollars. And so, do you think that the Yankees are going to win tomorrow? I hope so. It will be an awesome match. Are you a fan of the Yankees or not so much? Not really. Not at all. <laughs> uh, great. It's all West Side. And how do you think all the players are doing? Who do you think is really standing out? Um, I think Kershaw standing out right now. He's doing his job, obviously, definitely. Right, and he typically doesn't do so well when it comes to these type of games, right? Exactly. So definitely. He's coming in clutch right now, and hopefully he closes out for us. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Chris. Awesome. We're going to send it back to you guys in the studio, keeping in touch with the Dodger game, and we'll see what happens. Thank you for that, Savannah. The Dodgers went on a phenomenal run this season, at one point winning 52 out of 61 games. Annenberg Media's Lauren Dunn is live in the studio with more details on the historic season for the Dodgers. Lauren? Thanks, Brian. Entering the playoffs, the Dodgers had their best regular season since the franchise moved to Los Angeles almost 60 years ago. They won the NL West by 11 games. The Dodgers finished with 104 wins, good enough for the best record in all of baseball. Despite losing 11 straight games into September, the Dodgers righted the ship just in time for the postseason. LA won eight of their last 10 games to close out the year and have lost just one game in the playoffs. The Dodgers have the highest payroll in all of the MLB, yet unsung and underpaid players have proven to be the most instrumental in the team's success. All-around utility player Chris Taylor and catcher Austin Barnes both recorded career years, but the real surprise was Cody Bellinger, 
He's making a strong case for a unanimous Rookie of the Year award, with 39 home runs, breaking the Dodgers' rookie home run record. The three combined for less than 1% of the team's salary. The Dodgers' deep lineup is joined by a bullpen that gave up the second fewest runs in the MLB. Clayton Kershaw garners most of the headlines, but it's the relief pitchers that have carried this team through the playoffs. Closer Kentley, closer Kentley Jansen has shut down everyone he has faced this postseason. He is joined alongside Brandon Morrow, who has become the team's unconventional setup man. The bullpen has yet to allow a run this postseason. This year certainly has been a special one for the Dodgers. Baseball analyst and Fox Sports 1 host Kevin Burkhart broke down why this year should be different than last year's disappointing finish in the NLCS. I really don't think that there is a lot different. I think they're better. I think they're deeper. You know, certainly Bellinger coming up is added to an already deep lineup this year that they didn't have last year. Um, getting you Darvish at the trade deadline was a huge move, and he was great the other night. So I think it's similar. I just think they're a little bit better and a little bit deeper than they were a year ago. The Dodgers used that depth all year long to take the National League West by storm for the fifth time in a row. They're looking to reach their first World Series since 1988. Cody Bellinger went from being one of the best baseball players in Arizona to a household name across the country. I spoke with his best friend Cole Tucker about what it's like knowing the MLB All-Star. We became best friends in high school and uh, it's just been really cool to see uh, how he went from this little dorky, goofy, skinny kid to play first base to being a home run derby, All-Star, Rookie of the Year type big leaguer. It's, it's unbelievable. He texted us the morning of, I think it was like April 26th or something, and he's like, all right, guys, this has to stay here. I'm not allowed to tell anybody, but he told us. Uh, I'm on my way to San Francisco right now. Like, I'm getting called up. Like, I don't tell anybody. So I read that text. I told everyone in my locker room, which I shouldn't have done, uh, just because I was freaking out. I was excited. And I called him immediately. I was like, dude, are you messing with us? Like, is this a joke? Um and he's like, no, dude, like, I'm, I'm in the hotel right now. And then we FaceTimed, and he showed me San Francisco out of his hotel room. It was unbelievable. Um, I, I was literally jumping up and down. It was, it was so cool. You could just tell how proud of himself he was. I, I always thought that he'd get drafted and go on to pro ball, play in the big leagues. But I didn't think that he would ever be Cody Bellinger. Like, this has been, this has been amazing. Cole watched Cody play against the Diamondbacks earlier this month and is now hoping to watch him in the World Series. Fans are showing their support for the Dodgers across social media. Hashtag this team is currently trending on Twitter. Celebrities including Rob Lowe are tweeting it's time at the Dodgers. It's basically saying let's sweep the Cubs. We have Mario Lopez tweeting let's go at Dodgers once again showing his support for the team. And we also have the Twitter of the Los Angeles Dodgers official account promoting support for their team as well. The account is highlighting individual players in this series of tweets. Minor League Dodger players for Minor League for the Dodgers, Jeff Paschke says the team is grateful for the support. Usually teams that go far into playoffs like have some kind of saying and and it really builds like the whole all of LA and all their fans really get behind it. You probably see shirts and hats and all kinds of stuff with hashtag this team on it and uh, I think it's really good for the organization. Fans are already tweeting about the game, voicing their hope that the Dodgers will continue their successful season with a win tonight. A lot of Dodger fans are out buying hats, pins, jerseys, anything Dodger blue. At Dodger Stadium today, fans showed up to support their team by buying Dodger gear. Some people came out from out of town, even though the Dodgers are in Chicago, to see the stadium and show their team spirit. I'm looking at the pins. I'm a, I'm a pin collector and I haven't had a chance to take a look at the uh, NLCS pins or whatever other pins they have. I want to see what sweaters, what shirts I can possibly rock. I have a whole closet full of stuff, a whole drawer full of, uh, you know, number of hats, number of um, t-shirts and things like that. I came out here originally on vacation to see my relatives out here, but I wanted to see the uh, stadium again and also buy a little souvenirs. These fans say they're excited that the Dodgers are one game away from the World Series and expect to pay the price for tickets to see their team in the championship. As you might expect, students in the Chicago area are rooting for the Cubs. 
to understand what the atmosphere is like in Evanston, we spoke to Northwestern University sports reporter Marty Johnson while he was on his way to class. My friends who are Cubs fans who I've talked to, they have like a very positive outlook. Um, <laughs> they think that like they still have a chance, which I guess they do. But if you look at it from a historical uh, standpoint, only one other team has come back from three games to none to go on to the World Series. So, um, but I mean, just the general buzz in Chicago since the Cubs have gotten good has been like electric. It was definitely that way last year when they won it all. The Cubs may have taken the cake at last year's World Series, but we'll see tonight whether the Dodgers have a chance at the title this year. For four consecutive seasons, local Dodger fans have been left out if they don't have Spectrum Cable. That's because Spectrum is the only cable company that carries the games. Customers actually pay extra for the service, but 70% of Dodger fans don't have Spectrum and aren't able to watch at home or the way games on TV. We spoke to USC students about how they're finding creative ways to watch the game. Parents have been Dodger fans as long as I can remember. They've never been to games, however, though. They just watch them on TV. Like me, what I like to do is keep uh, um, keep m myself updated on my phone, through an app, or, you know, when I'm on, <laughs> I know it's horrible to say, but in class, like I have it on the side of my computer. Uh, I used to watch them on TV, um, but now here at USC, I don't have a TV, so I usually just stream online. USC's cable provider also doesn't provide the channel, but that won't come between loyal fans and a historical season. Ryan? The Dodgers tried to bring home the pennant tonight in Chicago. The New York Yankees are in the middle of a comeback run for the ALCS. If both teams win, we could see another cha cha chapter in one of baseball's biggest rivalries. The Mickey Yankees Mantle first met in. the Dodgers for the World Series in 1941 in a subway series between Brooklyn and the Bronx. That repeated itself six more times between 1941 and 1956. The rivalry followed the Dodgers from Ebbets Field to Los Angeles, where the Dodgers started another four World Series by meeting by series meetings by sweeping the Yankees 4-0 and chalked up two more World Series titles. In their 11 meetings, the Yankees have won eight series and the Dodgers have won three. The last time the teams met in the World Series was in 1981, when the Dodgers won four games to two. We talked to some fans to see what a Yankees Dodgers World Series means to them. Yankee Stadium just goes crazy when they're in the playoffs, so it would be huge for me. I'd probably fly back to New York at some point to go see a game if they're in that, and just the New York LA market itself and the rivalry would be great. For me, it'd mean a lot. One, because we'd like going to New York and seeing the new Yankee Stadium would be amazing. We only have three wins, so it'd be nice to get some revenge on them and also beat all, because they all think they're winning it. For Dodger fans, the Yankees aren't the only thing that make a World Series memorable. And on Sunday, fans might have felt a little deja vu for the Dodgers' last championship title. Dodgers infielder Justin Turner hit one out of the park in the bottom of the ninth inning to bring home Game 2 for the Dodgers. Turner's run was reminiscent of a play that happened exactly 29 years ago to the date. In Game 1 of the 1988 World Series, Kurt Gibson hit a walk-off home run against the Oakland A's. Let's take a look. Center was the first walk-off win in the postseason since Gibson's home run, almost three decades later. Let's take one last look at the score. Heading into the bottom of the third inning, the Dodgers have taken a commanding 7-0 lead after Kike Hernandez slapped a grand slam to right. It's the second home run of the night. Thanks for watching See It Live from everyone here at Annenberg Media. I'm Brian Redhead. And I'm Hannah Wing. You can watch us on the web at uscannenbergmedia.com. Good night.